Hello everyone. Um, so yesterday I posted a tutorial on um, how to trigger like lights breaking uh, with a trigger box, and someone in the comments um, asked if I could show how to trigger an event only if another event has been triggered first. So like a priority system, or let's say maybe if the player has a key or if he has a flashlight then an event can happen if a door's open or if a door's closed then that event can happen or it can't you know etc etc so to set that up um, it's actually quite simple you just need to make sure you're using the branch and a variable so to do that let's quickly set up um, uh, scene again, so we'll add a trig box um, and just for the tutorial so we know whereabouts on the scene the trigger box is we'll add a basic shape and then drag that down to the floor so we know where to stand to set it off now obviously you wouldn't necessarily have this yourself but just, just for this um, <coughs> So let's add a, a light, so we'll do basically the same, we'll drop the light level down for the directional light first, um, and then we'll add a light into the scene, so let's use a point light, drag that up, um, just so we can see where this is easier, drop a little post in. And we'll get the coordinates for that, and then pop them into the light, drag that up. Right, so we know where that light is. Reduce the distance. Okay, so we have our trigger, we have our light, um, but we don't want to trigger this unless something else has happened first. So we'd have to set something up. So we'll go into our level blueprint. Um, and then from our level blueprint, we will, well, if it decides to open for some strange reason, it's, uh, seems to be a bit stuck. There we go. Um, so in our level blueprint, we will add a reference to our trigger box, which is the first thing we can do. So we'll highlight the trigger box, right click, um, go to add event, collision, on that to begin overlap. So it's the same process as the other tutorial that I posted. Um, but yeah, so first thing is cast to first person, uh, character, other actor into object. So we have that set up. Um, and a thing I didn't mention yesterday um, in my other video is you don't want a light to keep breaking every time the player walks through it. So you can alter that by doing a do once node so this it can be reset so you could have an event where maybe the player changes the light bulb and you could have this then reset that so it can break again um, so you connect these two together so it's gonna players gonna walk over the trigger box the trigger box will detect the player it'll only fire off the code once and then we want to play sounds at location. Um, so let's do our breaking bulb sound. Um, and then we'll do, so let's grab our light source and then right click create reference, get world location for this, uh, light component, <coughs> let's pop that in there, connect the return value to location, and let's set the sound multiplier to 2, it's a bit louder, okay let's keep that nice and tidy, and the next one we're going to do is obviously break the light, so we can left click on point light, control C to copy, control V to paste. 
So we now have another copy of that point line and then we want to set visibility and we want the light component and we want that to be off. So we leave that unchecked. Now I'll quickly demonstrate this and show you how that works. So we know that we've got our box here, so we know the trigger box is there. So when I walk over this, that should go off with a sound. So we know it's broke. Now, if we want to control that effect, but we don't want it to happen without something else happening, then we need to add a variable. And then let's say uh, is open um, with question mark and we can drag that into the scene and then we can do uh, a branch so B and left click or right click and then type branch so you get the same thing and then we want to set so basically how a branch works is okay is that door open true the door is open and then it will fire off a line of code if the door open no it's false then it will fire off a different line of code so we connect the output from is open to the input condition on the branch just like that and if it's true we want it to fire this code off if it's false we want it to do maybe something else or nothing at all. So you could have this fire off another complete different code. So you can have the trigger box do two separate things, but based on whether or not this variable is true or false. So it is, it's, it's quite clever. It's good. It's really good to use in a horror game because you can have one trigger box do multiple, many, many things, um, but based on whether or not it's true or false. So this is basically just a question branch. Um, has the player got a key? true yes then fire this code off no then the door remains locked so if the player hasn't got a key you could have play sound at location and when the player presses e or left mouse or right mouse button on the door it plays a, a locked door sound but when the player has the key it'll play an unlock sound and then the door will open um so now we need to do something to set this up so it knows that well, we need to set up a variable for this branch to fire off from. So let's say um, we make a very quick, uh, I'm trying to think. All right, let's just add a little door, or let's add in uh, anything really. So let's. Where should we make it? Uh, let's make it here. So we'll do a we'll do another trigger box. Uh, let's add another trigger, and we'll do. There's no script to this tutorial, so yeah, just sitting here with a cup of tea and quickly making this. So. We'll do another trigger box, uh, Alt and drag to copy, um, and then we'll set this one up. So let's have a look, see what we want to do. Okay, so <coughs> we'll have um, a block move, uh, a really simple, quick uh, matinee scene level sequencer so let's have this block just go up so we'll create a new level sequence uh, block move and then we'll just add this block in so this could be anything the door or you know a hidden passageway or you know whatever you want to make so add the cube in um, and then we'll do um, location so we can get rid of these two because we're not rotating and we're not making the block bigger or smaller um, and we want it to go up on the uh, uh, z-axis so we want we can get rid of that and that 
and then we know that this is the Z, right? So let's place the block on the ground. We want to add a key frame in there, and then three seconds, we want to move this block and then add a key. So from there to there. So over three seconds, the block will just slowly rise up. Um, move the end point so it's at the end of the animation. Save it. Done. Where's it placed my uh, level sequencer? Where is it hiding? There it is. So now what we want to do is we want to go back into our um, level blueprint to find that it's just up here and open level blueprint. And we're going to add our trigger box in so we can just copy this code here, uh, this node. So we right click, <coughs> collision, overlap, and then control C, control V, copy these, oops, copy these two up. Uh, we'll do a, oops, do want, and we will then go to our level sequencer, and then we can do pause at end, and then we can left click on it to select it, and then right click, create reference, and then we'll do play sequence player um, and then yep that should be fine and then what we do then is let's make sure this is all right we add so instead of having it look like this where control left click control and drag we want to set boolean to true so we drag that here like so and then we click true so we're now telling so when this code fires off the player walks over the trigger box it detects the player fires this code off once we then <coughs> play the animation that we just made in the level sequencer and then it's telling the game now, so we have a branch there which is looking for a true or false answer. So this now is telling that this branch that it's now true, that this can now fire off this code because we've set to true at the end. So technically, let me sh quickly show how that works. So when I go into the game, this shouldn't work, but if it does, I apologize. Right, so nothing's happening. Um, we've still got our light, it's not broken, but if we go over here and then we walk over it, we can see that the block now moves. And then if we go back over here, because that block's now moved, the board will break. I hope that makes sense. So what's happening is, when the player walks over this trigger, it's now saying, oh yeah, that block's moved, so that branch now reads as true, because of how we set it up in the code. So if we go in here and look once more, this code was asking, is open, and we didn't have an answer, so it can't fire the code off. So if we quickly play sound at location, and then just put, um, I don't know, anything like locked. Okay, we'll just do that sound. That's so I'll show you what I mean. So if we go back in. If I walk over this now, it should play that lock sound. Okay, so we know that the code hasn't got the true variable because it's now false because we heard that noise. Okay, so once we walk over this, it's now set to true because the animation's played and the ball can break. So quick look at this, we've got uh, begin overlap, trigger box, cast it first person player. We have our do once here, so this can be continuously played every time the player walks over it. 
this will only ever play once unless we reset it. <coughs> to do that, we have to drag it out of here and into the reset, but we, we, we don't need to for a broken bulb, unless you want to replace the bulb. Um, so this code is again, trigger box, detect player, do once, and then it's playing the animation, and this is the important part. So wherever you set this variable to is open, it'll look for that in the code for this one. Um, if you have any more questions about it, just ask away in the comments, but that'll be it for this one. Um, yeah, I'm more than happy to make any more tutorials that people might want or need for their games. If you need any help, just ask. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your week. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.